Good afternoon. All right, I know it's late in the afternoon. That's right. Good afternoon. Very nice. All right, hi. My name is Matt Dunn. Uh, I'm the head of community affairs for Google. And I am a, uh, I like to tell Paul, a recovering uh, AmeriCorps VISTA director. And I am so delighted to be here. Uh, I remember fondly the 35th anniversary that we put together uh, a, a few years ago. Um, now, uh, Michael, uh, but, uh, and it was uh, inspiring then and it's been inspiring today. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what I think is one of the core powers of VISTA, which is its ability to partner. And what's, I think, the power uh, historically is that it's actually been an organization that has been able to evolve to be able to use the tools to address the challenges of poverty of each era that it's been around. So in the 60s, it was creating, as, as you heard uh, in the conversation with Misha, uh, it was creating the Head Starts and Job Corps. Uh, in the uh, 70s, it was creating professional corps of architects and attorneys who are going out and serving in, in uh, low-income communities. Uh, in the 80s, it empowered individuals who were in poverty by allowing them to serve and to be able to give back. And in the 90s, it was taking strategies of literacy, and then eventually it was helping to bridge the digital divide. Uh, and those, those, those uh, opportunities also were strengthened because as a program, it was created to be able to do partnerships with nonprofit organizations to expand the core behind, beyond what the federal allocation would afford. And this is not a normal thing in the federal government. And the cost share program allowed for nonprofit and private sector partners to have some skin in the game. And as a result, the whole is, becomes much greater than the sum of the parts. When I was first, direct, uh, when I was first uh, uh, named the, uh, the director of AmeriCorps VISTA by Harris, uh, he, on day two, uh, set me up with a meeting uh, with Sergeant Shriver. And I have to say, I was a little intimidated, and I walked over, and I got brought in and introduced by Harris, and then he left me alone with Sarge. And we had this 45-minute conversation that ranged all over the place. We talked about the Peace Corps. We talked about the early VISTA program. We talked about Special Olympics. And it was magnificent. And suddenly, he became very, very focused and looked right at me. And he said, Matt, I don't really understand this internet thing. And I'm not sure what these new tech companies are that are being able to leverage it. But what I see in it is opportunity to empower people, an opportunity to be able to give people access to information. And as you know, Matthew, information is power. So as the VISTA director for this next century, since I was just happening to be there in the year 2000, uh, you have the obligation to leverage the internet to finish the war on poverty. And then he stood up and said, nice to meet you, and sent me on my way back out the door to walk back to the Corporation for National Service. So I was, uh, I was a little um, bowled over by that. I, of course, did what every good VISTA director recently does. I went and found Kelly Daly and asked her what we should be doing, and we followed all those uh, rules, and we went forward and we actually created some really amazing programs that helped to build, bridge the digital divide, but also started to look at nonprofit organizations themselves to be able to say, how can we empower nonprofits to be able to be successful? And at that time, large nonprofits were sinking millions of dollars into technology tools and it wasn't necessarily clear how they were going to work. And you saw lots of other organizations that were smarter, that were doing really innovative, cutting-edge work that were limited because they did not have the technology tools to be able to take their ideas to scale. And we partnered through cost-share programs with the technology leaders of the time, uh, the IBMs and AOLs. And we were able to deploy hundreds, if not thousands, of AmeriCorps VISTA members across the country to take on both that technology literacy piece as well as that capacity building piece for organizations. So fast forward eight years, uh, and I'm the uh, first head of community affairs for Google. And I show up there, and I am surprised to learn that there are all of these products 
that businesses gladly pay us a, a lot of money to be able to use to be successful and efficient in business, and we give it away to qualified 501c3s. Now, I was the techie guy when I was at Vista, and I went on and I was, you know, lecturing at Tuck and all these other things and thought I knew all about it, and I had never heard of any of these programs where you were able to get an entire enterprise package with email and calendar all integrated together and you didn't have to pay for servers and all of that, that you could get a branded YouTube channel and be able to have someone contribute right after they've seen the tear-jerking PSA that you've put on to be able to contribute to your organization, much less the $10,000 uh, per month of free advertising that we offered to any nonprofit, and I am sure that Stephanie is going to be able to get the grant to be able to use that as well to recruit people and to recruit uh, donors to be able to support the organization. So I then checked in with my peers at other Silicon Valley companies and it turned out they did the same thing. That Salesforce and Microsoft and Facebook, they all had products specifically to empower the nonprofit community. But we found three things that were in common across the board. One was almost no nonprofits knew about it, which is pretty infuriating. The second was the ones who did know about it didn't have a lot of in-house capacity to be able to use it. In fact, in many cases, the account was created by their AmeriCorps Vista member who had been there for a year and then left and didn't leave the password, and they didn't know what to do with their AdWords. It was still advertising the same event that was two years ago. But, uh, and then the third was there was really no one in the country, whether it was at a nonprofit organization or a consultant or anything else, who knew how to connect between the different products who knew how to hotwire between a Salesforce account and a Google Calendar to be able to send out a donor reminder letter. And so what we did was create something uh, called Hands on Tech. Uh, we, we reached out uh, to the Points of Light Foundation to be able to try to accomplish uh, a couple of things. We had we had skills-based volunteers at these tech companies who wanted to give back and didn't know how they could and frankly were doing things that wasn't really using their core skills. Uh, we had the, the uh, tools from these nonprofit organizations. We had the actual organizations themselves who had the need and then we had communities where we had a critical mass of those organizations and tech companies but there was no bridge that was in between. So what we did is we recruited, uh, a, a, or Google uh, underwrote, uh, 28 AmeriCorps Vista positions. We trained them at uh, the Google complex in both technology management strategy as well as how to use our tools. And then we brought our peers in from Silicon Valley to train them on the tools of their organizations. And then we deployed them in teams of three to 11 different cities across the country working with service-based nonprofit organizations. And those service-based nonprofit organizations would hold uh, a variety of trainings, whether they were larger scale trainings that were for a, a, a number of different nonprofits, uh, or they were deeper dives, where the VISTAs, as they became more sophisticated, were able to drill down with people to be able to understand exactly what their technology needs were and to be able to convert over and be able to use the tool that was right for them at the right time. And across the board, we heard organization after organization reporting out on being able to raise more resources, being able to recruit more volunteers, and be able to perhaps most importantly cut their overhead costs so they could put the money where it counted the most. And the program over time was pretty successful. We trained over 15,000 individuals at 11,000 nonprofits over the course of three years. We had 3,300 skills-based volunteers that went into these organizations with their expertise in their particular area, being able to bring their knowledge to the organization to make a difference in that community. And the other side benefit we like to talk about, but it probably was the most powerful thing we did, is that we had 76 individuals who became some of the world leading experts in how to use these free online tools to be able to make a difference 
in a nonprofit organization. And while some of those individuals uh, went on to the private sector, uh, or others decided to take on two degrees at once, where's Julie? Are you still here? Julie, who was at our first uh, hands-on tech class. Uh, or, and, and we actually, we hired someone into Google, actually. Um, but most of them uh, went back into the nonprofit sector to be able to use those tools at a much higher expert level. And there is now a whole community of people that understand these tools better than anyone and are ready to be able to help organizations and organizations of organizations to bring to the next level. So, and it was a lot of hours of time. Uh, but what I want to leave you with is that really the program hasn't changed much since Sergeant Shriver came up with it. It's a program that is about creating an opportunity for quickly deploying people passionate about making a difference with the tools of their time to be able to help empower people out of poverty. And that's a timeless notion when you're looking at the kind of capacity building and the needs that are out there. But there is much more that can be done. And there's specifically much more that can be done when you can pull together the private sector knowledge and skills with that passionate community of people, with an organization like Vista, which is steady and supportive and can allow for year after year the work to go on, to be able to make sure that in this next era, we can actually bring an end to poverty in America. Thank you.